Mr. Granizo, could you explain, first of all, the Ministry of Heritage, I've, something I've not heard of before in relation to other countries. Could you explain a little bit about what, what that ministry does? Yeah, actually, uh, thank you for the invitation, first of all. Uh, actually, the, um, the government of Ecuador is structured in, in sectors, and one of the sectors that we have is heritage. And um, under heritage, we have environment, cultural issues, the Galapagos governance body, the um, heritage railroad that we have, and, and several other things. Um, so it's a coordination minister that deals with all issues related to heritage. And in that context, climate change is also part of our responsibility. And Ecuador uh, is a country I know very well. I know it has a very rich uh, biodiversity uh, and a country. Where does Ecuador stand at the moment in the, in the uh, debate over uh, sustainability, protecting this, uh, this very uh, rich and diverse uh, culture? Well, actually, it's considered one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. Um, it's, it's considered a mega diverse country. And um, within the the issues that the government is do, are doing uh, regarding the biodiversity and cultural issues, we have uh, developed a new constitution that recognizes rights to nature. Which, we, is a new, which is a new law, I understand, 2008. It's 2008. How, how has that worked so far in the last three years or so? Well, um, we are aligning all the legal framework to the new constitution, and it, it, it has been a little bit challenging. challenging. Uh, because, of course, we are in heritage, all laws, all, all regulations, and all those have to be aligned to the new constitution, and, and it, it's taken time. But in the meantime, uh, I, I could say that, the, um, for instance, the, the deforestation rates have diminished since uh, the, um, the launching of the constitution. The um, indigenous rights have been improved. Um, and of course, all the policies related to climate change within Ecuador regarding to mitigation and adaptation have been also improved. For instance, one of the most important initi initiatives that we have in Ecuador is the Yasuni ITT initiative, which is an initiative launched by the government of Ecuador in which 20% of our oil reserves we want to uh, keep underground in exchange of, of a compensation from rich countries. That means, re remember that Ecuador is an oil producer country. So to leave 20% of our oil reserves underground is a very uh, interesting initiative and a very challenging initiative for the world. I mean, challenging, I imagine, because it must be very tempting for any developing economy to exploit its oil reserves. Absolutely. But uh, so you're simply going to leave it there, leave it underground, if you receive adequate compensation exactly. for doing that. It's, it's, it's part of the co-responsibility that other countries have, the, the industrialized countries have, because they have been, they have polluted the atmosphere. So part of the part of the of the of the co-responsibility is recognize the um, uh, measures that countries are taking for not emi uh, producing emissions to the atmosphere. That's that's the basis. And we have bring we have brought to the to the to, to this COP a, a, a mechanism that uh, involves. This, this concept of, of uh, net avoided emissions, is, as we call, it consists in, in receiving a compensation for any activity that a country decides to do sovereignty for not emitting uh, greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. And have, has so far, I mean, we're obviously early stages in the negotiations, but have other, country, other countries been receptive to that idea? Yes, there are many countries that are, are very interested in the concept. Actually, we have uh, submitted um, a, a, an official paper to the convention, has been accepted. Uh, the problem is everything is going to be uh, uh, related to the uh, uh, approval of the second commitment period. Uh, the second commitment period is, the, is the, uh, for the Kyoto Protocol. Kyoto, yeah. It's the, the cornerstone of our discussions here in Durban. Uh, and, and we are in the same line with the other countries, many other countries, for instance, the G77 countries, which uh, they believe that the second community period is the key issue for everything else. And are you talking with other with Latin American neighbors? I mean, do you talk more or less with one voice on the environment issue? Well, particularly, yes, we, we have a, a, a voice, but particularly we are members of the ALBA group, which is a, a group of, of uh, six countries with a very strong and, and, and uh, firm 
voice uh, on climate change. Those are Venezuela, Colo uh, Cuba, uh, Nicaragua, uh, Dominica, Bolivia, and Ecuador.